I'm not even gonna make an introduction for this video because I'm so stoked to get right into this and talk about the huge upcoming changes for Escape from Tarkov. If you had a chance to watch Talking Tarkov podcast with Nikita, Cotton, Clean and Deadly, you probably have a decent idea of what we can expect from EFT in the near future. The preliminary patch notes are in the description, so have a look. And without further ado, let's get to it. Suka! First and foremost, the next patch is bringing us the long-awaited interchange map. It's been announced some time ago, but until I see it in the patch notes, I will not get my hopes up too high. And with only 4 maps so far, the game's replayability does tend to go down over time, as it's basically same things over and over again. The interchange comes as a real refreshment, and I personally cannot wait to try it out, though I will not stop here because the streets of Tarkov is the map I'm waiting for, just because of the urban setup. In terms of how Interchange will be played, I'm assuming that it will be most similar to Shoreline and the infamous Health Resort to be specific, but with a lot more open space. Overall, a new map is always appreciated, and from what we've been able to see so far, it looks like the focus will be on the interior. And this beautiful mall, as we can see a bunch of stores, IKEA or IDEA. Some of the outdoor screenshots, however, show us what looks like a highway with some vehicle wrecks and barricades on the road, a parking lot, and a go-kart track. So don't hold me to it, but the mall will most likely be the number one place of interest. It's kinda obvious, but what I'm wondering is, is it gonna be like a bigger version of Factory, or is it going to be more like Shoreline? Yeah, just let me know what you guys think and what you would like better. Be that as it may, just imagine the potential firefights in that huge mall. I mean, even if it's not a horror game, some of these screenshots look pretty scary, especially this one with the mannequin. All in all, I don't want it spoiled before I get to play it, and I'm pretty sure neither do you, so let's see what else is coming with the patch. Okay, this next one is a huge game changer and will drastically reduce the pacing of pretty much all raids. And in my opinion, that's very good. You want a game that stands out? Well, here you go. I mean, this is it. The new magazine loading and unloading system will require you to slow the fuck down, take it slow, carry more magazine and actually pay attention to what you're gonna get yourself into. So if you rush a squad of 3 or even 2 and miss most of your shots and you only have one extra mag, it's probably not gonna go so well. At least the 20 rounder mags will finally be viable again, and just by implementing this feature, Tarkov has taken a huge step towards a very balanced immersion. We are also getting a new skill, specifically designed for this new feature. So, loading and unloading of ammo into the magazine will not happen instantly. The time required to both load and unload one cartridge may vary and will depend on the magazine and the level of the new skill, mag drills. However, the time spent on loading and unloading ammo applies in the raid only, whereas in the menu the procedure stays the same as now. By default, it will be unknown how many rounds there are in a mag, simply because it is not examined, and therefore is referred to as unknown, or rather the mag counter displays unknown number of rounds, with a question mark out of, for example, 30. However, only full and empty mags will be considered checked, and this is actually important to know. And another important thing. Both loading and unloading can only be done with inventory open, so if you close it or switch tabs, loading or unloading will be interrupted, with rounds that were already loaded into the mag they will stay in the mag, and the same goes for unloading. I really think that this is a great addition to the game, and while it may seem now that the meta is going to change drastically, I mean it will, but we'll get used to a bit slower pacing pretty soon. Now, another small but very important change to the PvP mechanics is the introduction of the face hitbox. In the preliminary patch notes, it's listed as helmet damage mechanics, modular hit zones, including face area. And I'm pretty sure we can all agree that this is the one thing that's been missing from the game, and also raised quite a few debates among players and especially streamers. I mean, just try to remember all those situations, in which you were absolutely sure you hit an opponent right in the face and nothing happened. Well, except you dying, just because the whole face area counted as armor because of the helmet. And what this face headbox is potentially gonna do, is it's gonna make the pistol runs more viable when going against geared players. And with that said, the fast MT helmet and the visor attachment kinda screams a must-have. But while we're talking about that, we're getting the visor toggle mechanics with both audio and visual effects, as well as the appropriate protection of both variations. I'm sure though that these seemingly small changes will have a big impact on the whole PvP approach, as they will make you think twice before rushing an enemy who is armed with a shotgun and even scavs. I mean, not a person who's armed with scavs, just, you know, rushing scavs. So I'm really excited to see how this turns out and what further improvements it's gonna receive. 
I did mention rushing players that are armed with shotguns just a moment ago, and although I like using shotguns in Tarkov, in the current state of the game they just don't feel viable enough. Even with slugs getting a bit of a buff, I still want shotguns to have the much needed blast effect when shooting someone and something like a knockback. And yes, I'm aware that slugs are used for range. And even if the target is wearing armor, I mean when someone gets blasted with a buckshot, they should at least feel the stun. But I'm gonna leave this discussion for a different video and show you the M870, which is the first of four weapons in total we're gonna get with the new patch. So, with everything I just said about shotguns, does Tarkov need another one? The good old M870 is going to have a decent range of available attachments and even the sawed-off version. And just by watching this clip, I get a feeling that it's gonna have a slightly faster pump animation than the MP133. And even though I'm excited about every new weapon that gets introduced in Tarkov, I'm curious to see if the M870 will also bring some changes as to how the shotguns perform in EFT. And as I already said, when you see someone with a shotgun from up close, you should definitely be intimidated. I mean, it's just something to think about. Also, the Saiga is getting the long-awaited bigger capacity mag, as well as the AS Val. Yeah! While the Saiga is obviously going to be more fun to use with the new magazine, the Val will arguably become the new assault rifle meta. It's also getting new attachment options, so if you get bored of the regular OKP scope, you won't need to put an ugly-ass Cobra mount, you'll be able to attach a scope on the barrel, which is definitely a very nice addition. Concerning the 30-round mag, as I said it may not seem like a huge difference, but trust me, it is. Next up we have the almighty M1A, the second of a total of four weapons to be added in the next patch. The animations are just spot on, and overall I think the animations in Tarkov are really really good. Now from this setup we can see the DT mount with hybrid suppressor, both of which are in the game already and are quite versatile as far as the weapons go. The M1A is chambered for 762 by 51 so it's definitely going to be a hard hitter and pretty much back to back with the RSAS. By default it has a 20 round magazine and is not a selective fire rifle, although Nikita stated that the full auto fire mode will come later. Also before you jump to any conclusions, M1A is a civilian version of the M14 and therefore should only have semi-auto fire mode, but during the podcast someone mentioned the MK14 EBR mod 0 and this beautiful thing would just be crazy to have in Tarkov. So we are probably looking at a variety of barrels, stocks and receivers. And whatever else they decide to include, for me it's enough to have the plain M1A. The third weapon we're getting is the APS pistol, which is short for Stetchkin Automatic Pistol. It's chambered in 9x18 Makarov rounds and has a more than decent rate of fire of 750 rounds per minute. But with this stock it will surely be easier to control. Also, pay attention to the new reloading animation and how the character actually looks at what he's doing. All in all, I think an automatic pistol will be a great addition to the game and something that we've all been wondering about, especially the Glock was introduced. On to the new gear and animation changes. We are finally getting a plate carrier, yay! A new type of tactical vest with armor plates. We've been hinted towards this some time ago with a few screenshots, but no additional information was provided since then. Though I'm wondering if you'll be able to carry both soft armor and the vest with armor plates in it, or will you have to choose between the two? I mean carrying a fort and attack vest would just be ridiculous, and I'm pretty sure that the whole point of this is to give more options of going in the raid with at least some armor, though I am pretty sure that the armor rating of those plates is not going to be super high. And now take a look at this. Does it look familiar? I'm pretty sure this will be the new best helmet. There's actually a few helmets coming with the patch, as well as new customization options for different helmets like this one that has a visor on, which is currently only available for the Fast MT. Now, with finishing quests, players will receive a new type of reward, being able to buy certain items, and this is definitely worth to mention, as it raises the quest rewards to a new level. So for example, instead of receiving just one AS Val per quest completion, you will actually unlock the Val, and therefore will be able to buy it anytime you want. And once again, this is just an example, I'm sure they're gonna redo the traders as well as the items that should possibly be available much later into the game. And regarding traders, dock tags will become a barter item, which is yet another good aspect and a reason to collect them. Ever since they were introduced, there's no need to try and find a better reason to kill hatchlings. And now we're gonna be able to trade the dock tags of poor little hatchlings for a variety of items. Every new player in Tarkov will now have a much better chance of survival in their first week of playing as the game is getting a basic tutorial. 
So, instead of learning everything the hard way, the new players will be able to learn the very basics, get familiar with the controls and just get the overall feel of what Tarkov represents. I mean, yes, we have the offline mode now, but having a basic tutorial with some control pop-outs on screen, for instance hold alt key while leaning to do a sidestep and whatnot, will surely help every new player out there. Also getting to know the inventory, basic weapon modding and the terminator scavs will be of help. Not that it's gonna fully prepare you for all the events that will happen during raids, it will definitely serve a purpose. Other changes include shoreline optimization and reduced network latency, hopefully. It is currently the biggest problem in the game, but though it has become known that the servers are getting major stress tests, we're simply gonna have to wait for further netcode fixes and hope for a much better stability. So let's look at what else is included. Correct display of the current armor state. Very, very important during raids, cause sometimes your armor might be zeroed but it still appears to have some armor left. Inventory synchronization bugs. I'm pretty sure we all hate when you transfer the money from the raid into the stash and it just kicks you out to the lobby and you gotta transfer all the items again, which is boring. Bitcoins can now be stored in money cases, redesigned the sounds of movement on thin metal, mods now have various micro icons, change the first gear task which requires you to give him a kiver helmet as well as a Ford armor, and now pay attention to the next one, fixed PMC spawn points on factory. And I'm not entirely sure what they mean by this, did they change it or did they fix some bugs when you spawn right next to a player or I'm not sure, but for the sake of the video let's say they're new. And if that's the case, the early game on factory is going to change slightly, that is at least until we get familiar with the new spawn points. Rebalance of trader unlock conditions, ammo rebalance, including the specifications, prices and levels of loyalty, rebalance of the item's value, their characteristics, the occupied cells of weapons, armor, mods and gear. And a very important change, wait for it, aim punch is strongly reduced. Yes. Pretty sure we can all agree that it's been bugging all of us for a while so this might just be the best thing in the whole patch. So that's pretty much the important side of the upcoming patch, keep in mind that we still only have the preliminary patch notes so we're gonna see some additional changes, but overall I must say that it's looking pretty good. My only hope is that the netcode issue will gradually get better, cause at the end of the day we can have all the weapons we want, we can roam around 10 different maps, but none of it will matter if the netcode problem persists. Alright, hope this video was helpful, if so, subscribe, no 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 no, subscribe anyway cause I know you want to, okay? Come on, for the sake of potassium. Thanks for watching. Bye. Мы тебя научим, ваши билеты